Hey gamers, this is Halo Shadow, and uh, I'm going to do a quick little segment here and explain how to search for code in Cheat Engine. Now, typically, when you're using Cheat Engine, you'll be searching for memory values, right? Things that are changing in the memory. But there's a new feature that was added with Cheat Engine, uh, I believe 6.1, um, possibly 6.2, that allows you to search for actual code, execution branches in the code and um, most people don't know about this so this was new to me and hopefully it's new to you because this is very very helpful you can actually find um, and execute functions in the code without having to really do any kind of debugging or tracing or anything it's saves a lot of time so let's get started this is pretty on hand or hands-on I'm sorry I'm not gonna do much explaining so if you don't understand something, it's good to go on the Cheat Engine forum af afterward and uh, you know ask them some questions there or whatever. And if I need to make a more detailed version, I can. But for the time being, we're just going to search very quickly. And rather than play the game in this uh, in this instance, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to open this about window. And if you notice, there's no there's no hotkey in this window, so I can't just press a button and have it open. I have to click on this button, and uh, this little window opens that tells you about the pinball game and you can't click back onto the pinball game either this window has focus um, and you have to click OK and it'll give focus back to the game if, as you see you know the game is running correctly whatever and um, it's just waiting what we want to do actually is find out what code is creating this window dialog and we're gonna try to find that code by searching for it and then we're gonna try to call it ourselves and um, that's a good example of, of how to call a function or it should be, let's find out. Well, first thing we're going to do is click on memory view, and that's after you connect the game, um, or sorry, connect Cheat Engine to the game. Click on memory view, click on tools, and then click on Ultimap. <coughs> after you click on Ultimap, you want to. Uh, oh, 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 I forgot to do this part, hold on. By the way, if you haven't done this yet, you want to do this right as you boot your system, by the way. You want to start Cheat Engine, close like every program that's open and then you want to hit click on help and click on about and then there will be a little green text right here I already have it loaded but you have to have the dbvm driver loaded this driver lets you profile the code in cheat engine using ultimap to try to find the execution branch if you don't have this driver loaded you can't do any of this and so you want to make sure you do this right as you boot or it's gonna probably blue screen you so make sure that you reboot first um, if you're using an AMD processor, you can't do this. You have to have an Intel processor that supports uh, virtualization. Sometimes it's turned off in your BIOS, but it'll tell you that also. <coughs> so what you want to do here, though, is after you make sure that you have that turned on already, um, you want to hit Start. And if you see right here, it's, it's collecting branches that are being executed already. I'm just going to move my mouse around and you know make sure it, it just gets a bunch of this junk out of the way. And then what you have over here is your filter options. You can actually tell it that the code has been executed, the code has not been executed, stuff like that. So what I want to do is tell it, because we haven't opened the, the about dialog yet, I want to tell it that the code did not get executed and it filtered all that stuff out. Then I'm going to open the about dialog, and the first thing I'm going to do is click out mark out all new entries. Because since we've opened the dialog, we've executed the code that we want to find. And uh, anything else that it records after that is irrelevant to us and so we're going to automatically mark those out so now what we want to do is we want to find functions that have only executed one time so we're going to click on this because we've only opened this about window once see we filtered out about 2700 things we have 951 left though um, I I know that the code I want to uh, that I want to call is inside of the pinball program so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to find routines or filter out routines that are not in a specific module and I'm gonna to go to pinball that's the module I want to keep the routines from so we have about 15 things left <clears throat> and the very last thing I'm gonna do is click on filter out routines that were not called and I clicked on that now we have two things left so you can hit show matches at the bottom it'll show you what we have left and I'm just gonna hit OK to close that dialog see the pinball game is still working um, this is all we have left so these two functions were recorded in the time that we had this running so what I'm gonna do now is hit stop because we don't need to have this running anymore we've already found the code we want and uh, this this can be pretty laggy on a bigger process 
so it's good to stop it or pause it whenever you don't need to be scanning. And so this, um, I'm going to move cheat engine down for now because we don't need it, but this code right here, the last origin part of it, will actually show you uh, what called the function. See this, if you click on the actual address, it'll bring you to the beginning of the function itself. But if you click on the last origin, it'll show you where it's being called. And so that's what we want to look at. And if we look at both of these things, these calls are actually right next to each other. And um, this this first function is being called second in the actual code. And from looking at the code, I would I would guess that probably this first function here, which is being called second, is the one that we need to call. Because if you look right here, uh, you know, it's being pushed a dialog string. It's probably a label that it uses in order to figure out which dialog to open. And, um, and this other function above it doesn't really seem to have any arguments that are being given to it. So we're going to assume that this is what we're going to try to call. We're going to try to do that um, and make it work by calling this. So here's, uh, let's find out. And it may not work. I mean, uh, sometimes you find the wrong one and it doesn't work and you have to go back and, and figure out which one that you're supposed to call. That's part of the hard part. And, um, you know, as you get better at that, it becomes easier. It's just really a matter of understanding uh, what arguments to pass the function and how to pass those arguments. So what we're going to do is actually hit tools here. We're going to hit auto assemble because I want to record these pushes before the call so I can make them in some code that we allocate. I'm going to allocate some code in just a second and I'm going to put our own little code in here and then we're going to create a thread on the code that we create to call this function. So, and I'm going to put a marker here. You can, you can just follow along on this part if you've never written a, a, a cheat engine assembly script. Um, that marker is just a memory address. Right now we don't know what the memory is going to be, so we just use that as a, as a uh, place filler. And I'm just going to copy exactly what code is... Um, wow, I keep hitting the wrong keys. Exactly what code is uh, right before that function call, which are the pushes. See that there's a push ESI right here? I'm going to assume that, like we don't know what this is, and I'm going to assume that it's nothing, given that we're just creating a dialog. I'm going to assume the ESI is not important. It may even be this main window, like to try to keep the priority from it or something, but we're just going to push zero, a null value for that. And um, I'm assuming that that's going to work, so if we cross our fingers and we get lucky, it will. And then we're going to push this last argument, 28204. And then the very last thing we're going to do is do the function call which is zero one zero zero seven eight nine a so easy to have your eyes jump and start writing the wrong line that's a easy mistake to make but anyway these these are our uh, instructions that are required to make this call and then the very last thing we're going to do is do a return sorry there we go a return because uh, when we create the thread we want it to stop being executed we want the thread to just go away after it's called this function we don't want the thread to stay there and just keep running and eventually crash so we're gonna copy this code actually I think we can just tab back over to this we don't even have to close this window What we're gonna do is hit allocate memory right here and just hit OK that's you know whatever size is fine and then this address this memory address that it gives us we're gonna put that as the label right here and then we can hit execute and it's gonna copy that code that we wrote straight over to our memory address and here's the fun part because we've already written the uh, the little call here that we found by searching for the code in ultimap it was able to actually search for the code itself and uh, we found the call and we've actually created an emulated version of the call and we can go into uh, space kit at pinball and we, we should now be able to open this about dialog without actually clicking on that button so let's try that out I'm going to go to the very beginning of the code that we created here. Um, click on the very first thing, just highlight it, and then cr click on uh, Create Thread. And it's going to ask for the start address of the thread. If you have the right line highlighted, it, you shouldn't have to fill this in. So just hit OK. It's going to ask for an EBX argument. Um, we set up our function call right here already, so we don't really need to give it an EBX argument. Zero is fine, so it just hit OK. And it popped up on my other monitor here, so you can't see it, but I'll drag it over. It did open the window, and let's see. I'm going to close Ultimap. We don't need it. And as you can see, you can actually tab back and forth, be or between these now. And this is not uh, taking the focus priority of 
uh, from the pinball game. And if we if we wanted to, we could probably open more of these, even though typically you can only open one. See right here, I can't even. I can click on this one, I guess, but I can't click back on the pinball game. So you can only open one window through the menu. Um, but right here, obviously, we have two windows open. You know, if we go back into the game, it's all working fine. It's not crashed. Um, you know, all the lights are flashing. Now uh, we can execute the thread more than once. We can create more than one of these windows. And uh, in fact, you can do this for any function in the game, and just have it work. And then the important thing is to understand the concept here is because you can do this. Uh, you can do this on any game. So say that you know you could find a function for shooting your gun or for picking up ammunition. Say you found the function for picking up ammunition, you could call that function, and you can make the game think that you picked up an item or ammunition at any point in the game, just by calling the code that you found. Um, the hardest part is to learn about the different calling conventions and how you go about calling those functions but once you get that down you should be able to find almost any code in any application with relative ease using this um, this ultimap feature so I hope this made sense and if there are any questions just ask me in a comment or send me an email and um, have fun